हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस नाउ लर्न सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट नी सेंटरिक इंजरी और आल्सो कॉल्ड सीट बेल्ट इंजरी इट अकर्स ड्यू टू डिसेलरेशन एंड एक्सेलरेशन एंड डिसेलरेशन इंजरी फर्स्ट वी हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड हैज सीट बेल्ट सिंड्रोम व्हिच इज मोस्ट कॉमनली सीन इन नी सेंटरी ड्यू टू इनर्शिया द पेशेंट इन द कार इफ द पेशेंट इज इन द कार एंड द uh when there is an accident okay the seat belt normally due to the inertia the patient moves forward when he puts sudden brakes on okay or during any accident but if the patient has seat belt then this seat belt will restrict the motion of the person but this seat belt also causes internal uh, organ injury because because of inertia along with the body even the intestines also move forward but this seat belt will restrict the motion of the intestines so the mesentery gets torn leading to mesenteric injury so remember it is always associated with seat belt injury clinical features include there can be skin abrasion on the neck chest abdomen there can be increased chances of internal organ injury we have two types of mesenteric injury in first uh, this is the intestine okay here uh, this is the um, blood vessels we have a longitudinal tear in the intestine this is vertical or longitudinal tear in the intestine the chance of gangrene is less in the longitudinal tear and thus you will have to do primary suturing then in the second one here in the transfer stair whenever there is transfer stair of the intestine then the chances of gangrene is more and we will have to do resection and anastomosis should be done in this case other organs injured are we have to we have duodeno jejunal flexure followed by ileocecal injury are the other organs which are injured then the important thing is then the next the next type of injury which we are going to learn in this lecture is gastric injury so in the gastric injury this is the most common uh, most commonly seen with penetrating abdominal tra trauma it comes with gastric perforation treatment is you will have to do a primary closure so it's just you should do a primary closure but if there is any hematoma see if a patient has has hit with road traffic accident and if he is unstable and because he is unstable you have done fast and then you have because fast is positive you have gone to uh, do exploratory laparotomy on exploratory laparotomy if you see that the there is gastric hematoma then first and foremost you will have to find the perforation repair the perforation and drain the hematoma this is what you should do in gastric injuries the next type of injury which is important is duodenal injury duodenal injury is the most common injury which is associated with pancreatic injury in this duodenal injury is the in the investigation of choice is cect the only sign of duodenal injury is gas or fluid leak in the peritoneum and all retroperitoneum and you will also see leak of contrast in the retroperitoneum then most commonly it is associated with pancreatic injury but there will be certain sub, 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 certain situations where the isolated duodenal injury can occur isolated duodenal injury occurs due to the penetrating trauma whenever there is road traffic accident and the patient wet with a road traffic accident he has come to the emergency and on examination he is found to have low blood pressure and he is hemodynamically unstable you have done fast and then fast was found to be positive then you went to exploratory laparotomy exploratory lap exploratory laparotomy has shown the presence of duodenal hematoma then do not explore the patient do not explore it you will have to manage conservatively this will resolve itself if you try to explore this hematoma then uh, then this might cause um, this might lead to ischemia and necrosis of duodenum so you should not never try to explore the duodenal hematoma you have to manage it conservatively conservatively most of the cases it will resolve but if there is gastric outlet obstruction then 
then we should not operate but we should put an ng nasogastric tube and we will try to decompress the patient decompress the abdomen and then observe the patient for 14 to 21 days but if still even after ng tube tube intubation and decompression of the abdomen even still if there is gout gas if the gastric outlet obstruction still persists then we should go on to surgery right now now the next important organ injury here is about splenic trauma Splo splenic trauma the clinical features of the splenic trauma are bruising over the left hypochondrium is seen there is Kerr's sign here in Kerr's sign pain is referred to the tip of the left shoulder in splenic rupture why is the pain reflected to the refer to the tip of the left shoulder this is because of the fibers of phrenic nerve so whenever there is a, a splenic trauma there will be hematoma which is formed around the spleen or in the spleen okay because of this hematoma or blood the spleen is in direct contact with the diaphragm so this spleen this blood or hematoma will irritate the under surface of the diaphragm and the diaphragm is supplied by phrenic nerve fibers so as a result phrenic nerve fibers gets irritated and thus this will refer the pain to the tip of the left shoulder and this sign is called as Kehr's sign then uh, we also have balance sign where um, there is fixed area of percussible dullness is seen in left upper quadrant this dullness is due to the coagulation of blood this is called as balance sign now grading of splenic trauma is very important we can grade, grade, grade it based on the laceration and hematoma then first grade 1 grade 1 includes if the laceration is less than 1 cm in depth and hematoma is subcapsular that is less than 1 cm or if it is less than 10% of surface area grade 2 if it is 1 to if the laceration is 1 to 3 cm in depth and hematoma is subcapsular or central hematoma with 1 to 3 cm in diameter or 10 to 50 percent of surface area then we have grade 3 in grade 3 laceration is 3 to 10 centimeters depth with involvement of trabecular vessels and hematoma includes it is subcapsular or central hematoma with 3 to 10 centimeters of diameter or more than 50 percent of sur uh, surface area then if there is fourth grade here laceration will be more than 10 centimeters deep or there may be involvement of hilar vessels is seen then that is grade 4 in grade 4 if the hematoma is a subcapsular or central hematoma of more than 10 centimeters or 25 percent devascularization then we call it as grade 4 then in grade 5 we have complete devascularization or splenic tissue maceration is seen in grade 5 right so uh, now after this we will see the treatment treatment of splenic trauma so first treatment includes we have the splenic splenic trauma can be hemodynamically stable or hemodynamically in unstable if the patient is hemodynamically stable so first and foremost you will do fast okay and after doing fast if it is positive then to confirm the site of site of injury you will do CECT to confirm the injury you will do CECT with the CECT you will know the grades so in the CECT if you find that it is grade 1 and grade 2 in grade 1 and grade 2 we do conservative management so in the conservative management first we will have to admit the patient and we will have to check the vitals every hourly that is pulse rate bp are checked every hourly then hematocrit count is repeated every six hours abdominal girth monitoring should be done and then you will have to repeat the ct scan if there is if the patient is unstable in any case you will have to repeat the ct scan then at the end we should do surgery then if the patient is hemodynamically unstable then you will have to do urgent fast and if the and during that time the grade will be either 4 or 5 
most commonly then we should do surgery exploratory laparotomy and then we should do splenectomy then if there is hemodyne if the patient then there is one more grade which is grade 3 right in grade 3 there is one important thing it can be either hemodynamically stable or the patient can be either hemodynamically instable so based on the gradings that you get with past you will have to continue that type of treatment then one important thing is if on ct scan CACT in hemodynamically stable patients if you see presence of arterial blush is seen then that means there is extravasation of contrast is seen this extravasation of contrast is seen in grade 4 in such cases you will have to do angioembolization should be done if this angioembolization fails then you will do splenectomy or else angioembolization is done if there is arterial blush is seen on CACT now the surgeries of spleen surgeries of spleen include we have two types of sur surgeries one we can do partial splenectomy or complete splenectomy depending upon the extent of involvement the, then we have to learn about complications of splenectomy most common complication of splenectomy include basal atelectasis of lung there is basal atelectasis of lung why because we put a subcostal incision is put for splenectomy and once you put a subcostal incision and then you will see that the uh, then if there is pain and on inspiration the patient stops uh, taking breaths so after surgery see you will put a subcostal incision after in, in after uh, surgery okay uh, there will be pain at the site of incision which is normal so when the person tries to take inspiration then the patient will have pain on inspiration so as a result the patient will slowly stop taking deep breaths and as a result slowly the basal part of lung undergoes atelectasis so in order to prevent it we have to use three ball spirometer is used to encourage the patient to take deep breaths okay so this is the picture how the three ball spirometer looks like next one more complication is opsy which is overwhelming post splenectomy infection this is because after removal of spleen if you remember spleen is the major uh, site of um, um, immune system all the t cells b cells it is like a storehouse of all the t cells and b cells so when you remove the spleen the body cannot fi fight against the encapsulated bacteria like hemophilus influenza pneumococcus and meningococcus so there is increased chance so in this overwhelming post splenectomy infection there will be severe infection and more mortality is seen so in order to prevent it we will have to immunize the patient in 7 to 14 days before surgery this immunization is mainly done in elective surgery but if the patient is given emergency surgery then you will have to immunize the patient after surgery on post operative day 5 the other complications are we can divide them into early complications and late complications early complications include acute gastric dilatation fundal ischemia due to short gastric vessels like hematemesis and perforation pancreatic fistula due to accidental ligation and reactionary hemorrhage from splenic vessels then the late complication include opsy and thrombocytosis so this is about the splenic trauma so thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you